Hi everyone, I'm Dustin West here with the uh, Diz Unplugged and I am here joined by Ross who is a small yay here at Palo aboard the Disney Wonder and we're doing a chocolate tasting. We're also uh, looking at beverages, uh, some, some wines and whiskeys that go along with some of uh, these wonderful chocolate creations here at Palo. Uh, Ross does normally does the chocolate tasting seminars on board so we're going to kind of do a, a flash version of that and kind of give the history of, of all of this and, and, and see some of this wonderful chocolate stuff here. Yeah. Okay, well welcome to Palo. Uh, as you can see this is the chocolate tasting. It's a new product that we're doing at the moment. Uh, it's something different especially for the Alaska season. It's a little bit colder outside so we've got some new products. Um, so what we're going to do We'll talk the basics of chocolate, because most of you probably don't know that, uh, which is basically, it started around 2,000 years ago. Uh, the Aztecs and the Mayans were producing uh, chocolate, but it was very, very different. It was a liquid drink, a um, little bit like hot chocolate, but it was bitter. Uh, it wasn't sweet, it wasn't flavored. Uh, it was just the cocoa beans ground up with water, and it was a hot beverage. Uh, but the reason they had it was for fighting. Uh, they would supply their armies with this drink, and they said that it would give enough energy for one soldier for one day for one cup. So basically, Red Bull of today. Um, <laughs> so that's the uh, Aztecs and the Mayans in South America. We're producing this drink. Uh, then it evolved a little bit. Um, there was a Spanish king that came across to South America. He found what they were doing. He saw that they were using the cacao beans as a currency. Uh, they were paying their taxes. Uh, they were paying for their bills. So if you wanted to buy some food, maybe a rabbit or a chicken, you'd give one cacao bean. Uh, if you wanted to buy a slave, you'd have 100 cacao beans and you could buy a slave. Uh, so that's how they were paying their bills. So the, friend, uh, the Spanish king, he saw that's what was going on. So he started planting many cocoa fields because he could see you could make money from planting right. cocoa. I wish you could do that today. Right. Money doesn't grow on trees. But it did back 2,000 years ago. So they started planting money. Uh, so you can see money turned into money, and right. that's what happened. So the cocoa beans were currency. Uh, they were also making this very bitter drink, which they were using as their superpower. Uh, and the Spanish king saw this as a positive. So he took it, started using it. He then married a French princess. Um, so the French princess obviously was involved with France. So the French found out about this beverage. Uh, then Columbus, he found out about it and he started sweetening it with sugar cane from Asia. So that's the next step. So we've now got a sweeter chocolate beverage. Uh, then it evolved a few stages more around the late 18 and early 1900s, uh, very important change was that they found that they could get the cocoa butter from inside the bean. Okay. Uh, so white chocolate is actually uh, cocoa butter flavored with vanilla. It's not really chocolate as such as cocoa butter where the, the milk and the dark they have uh, cocoa powder added to right. make the color. Uh, where the white this is just uh, cocoa butter with flavor. So then Mr. Cabris in the early 1900s being British uh, he went out and made the first chocolate bar that we know as chocolate today. So it went from a liquid drink to a chocolate bar uh, now it's evolved a little bit more and you have these premium products, the Godivers. Uh, this one in front of us is Valorana, which is supposed to be used for pastry chefs only. Uh, okay. But today we're using it for tasting because of the quality. Um, it's the highest quality chocolate uh, for our guests to experience because it's quite unusual and it lasts much longer. You'll see when we taste it, it stays melted for a long time. Uh, with the less expensive chocolates, uh, they dry out quicker and become brittle. For pastries and desserts, you need the higher quality. So. Okay. That's a brief history in a couple of minutes. Uh, normally right. we talk a little bit more. Of course. That's where we got to now. So we've got fantastic chocolate with some fantastic beverages. Uh, we've got Tatanger Rosé Champagne, which is this one here. Uh, traditional champagne, rosé style. Uh, it's going to be very, very uh, dry on the palate, but when we have it with the chocolate, you're going to see a different side to it. So it's good for the guests to try new things, uh, experiment and learn. Then we've got a red wine. Uh, the one we're using today is uh, Chapelet Cervantes, which is a Bordeaux blend. Um, so it's the grape varieties from Bordeaux, but grown in Napa Valley. So that's a great wine. And then we're going to have a port. So this is a 10-year port. Very, very sweet, good for after-dinner drinks. Also very good with chocolate, as we'll experience. Fantastic. And the last one is our very special Glenmorangie Sigma. Uh, this is actually a very special blend of many different whiskies, but they actually malt the barley with chocolate, so that's going to be quite interesting oh. for you as well. Something new to try. Yes, I I love whiskey, but I've never had whiskey that's been malted with chocolate. That's Ooh. okay. I'm excited about this now. That's what it's about. So it's yeah. about trying new things. Yes, so, Dustin, if you go ahead and pick up your rosé champagne, you okay. Know, evaluate it. You're going to tell me what you see. What color is it? This is uh, almost a salmon pink. We're in Alaska, it's definitely salmon pink. Yes, okay.
So it's dry. Very dry, very smooth. The bubbles are gentle. The bubbles are gentle, yeah, it's not too carbonated. Okay. Yeah. So, we now try with the white chocolate. With the white chocolate. So this one. What's going to happen is the white chocolate is going to coat your mouth. Uh, the sweetness and the fat is going to cover your mouth. And when you taste the champagne, you tell me what the difference is. Okay. And it's just... Just a little mm, scoop. Yeah, and it's, it's still melted. I, I'm not used to that. Is it good? It's That's unusual, fantastic. Unusual context, having it in a melted form. Right, in the melted form, that is that is bizarre, but it is by far the best white chocolate I've ever had in my life. Okay, now if you try with the rosé champagne. Absolutely. Does it taste different? Definitely, it had. There's a, a spark to it. It pops. So the, the acidity more. levels go down, yeah. and you appreciate the champagne for the flavors. You get more of the crisp raspberries yes. coming through. Um, it makes a huge difference. I was very impressed the first time I did this tasting. I didn't think it would be a huge difference, but there is. Um, so that's that one, and as brief as we can go. So right. the sweetness and the dry, crisp acidity balance themselves out, so it's a nice one. Fantastic. What's okay. next? The red wine. Uh, red wine has tannin, uh, which comes from the skins, the pips, and the barrels. Uh, some people don't like tannin. It's kind of the mouth-drying feeling or the, the right. dusty sensation. Some people don't like that. Uh, so having chocolate with it, we're going to get rid of that. So if you try the, uh, the red wine on its own, um, okay. if you have a look at the color, you should see it's quite dark in color. Yes, it is. So if you gently swirl it and look for the legs or the tears, so we're looking for the wine coming back down the glass. So it should be very slow and thick. Yes. So that's nice high in alcohol. Legs. So sometimes okay. that's good. <laughs> go for the smells. Depending on what kind of night you're trying to have. So the smells right. and the taste. So you get the dark fruits, you get the, uh, the power of the alcohol. It's dark. I do get the power of the alcohol. It's also a little dry. A little dry. dry. So that's the yeah. tannins. You're going to have the black currants, the cassis. Uh, it's a traditional cab kind of style from Napa. If you try with the chocolate, it's up to you which one. You've got the dark, the white, or the caramel. And you can just pick up a piece and try Oh, the, the solid piece. Yeah. What would you recommend with the, with the I red? like the, the dark, but uh, the caramel is very good. They're all good. Um, I'll, I'll try the dark. It's this one right yeah. here. Right? So just pick it up, and you're going to have some of the melted chocolate with the hard chocolate for a different texture. Okay, first of all, that's dark chocolate's my favorite, and that's amazing. <laughs> so you got the melted chocolate again, which yes. is unusual. Um, but right. We're speeding up the process by melting it so it covers the mouth. Uh, yes. Then when you have the wine, it's going to be quite different, hopefully. So okay. Try your wine again and see what you think. It tastes like a grape. It tastes like a grape, so you're appreciating <laughs> more yeah. of the fruit coming through. So almost yeah. the tannins have disappeared because the layer of chocolate around your mouth, and you appreciate the wine for what it is. Um, right. So that's a great pairing that as well. That was absolutely brilliant. That changed completely from before chocolate and after. Okay. So we're slowly moving into the higher in alcohol now. Okay, great. So this one is the port. If you pick it up, have a look at the color. Describe it to me. It's almost a bright red. Yeah, so kind of a ruby in color. Yeah, an amber um, ruby. So go for the smells. How does it smell? Again, smells like a raisin or a prune. Raisins and prunes. Yeah. Uh, but you can feel the alcohol in the nose. It smells sweet. If you want to go for the taste. Clearly more high in alcohol. Okay, um, so you got the burn. And again, more of a raisin flavor. or okay. a prune flavor. Okay. So the recommendation is the caramel with the port. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Mm. Mm. Good caramel. Good caramel. So it's sweet. Yes. It's a lot less bitter than the dark chocolate because right. the cocoa levels are lower. 
Uh, but when you try with the ports, the alcohol levels should go down. So you're gonna. Okay. It's I'll gonna be more about the beverage now. Okay, I'll give it a shot. So if we're in Parlo, chocolate souffle and port is gonna go really, really well. I didn't try that the other night. We'll try it tonight. I'll have to do it tonight. All right, here we go. You're absolutely right. The the uh, the sting of the alcohol mm -hmm. almost disappears. Is, yeah, it's not there. It could and, be quite dangerous. Yes, it could be. So I'm I'm getting those those raisin flavors again, but much more intense. It's like uh, fruit and nut chocolate now. Right. Absolutely. So Cadbury's fruit and nut in a glass. Absolutely. That was fantastic. Okay. Okay. So this is the one I've been looking forward to. Cool. <laughs> well, some people don't like whiskey in the tasting. We get a lot of the women saying, we don't like whiskey. Right. After four glasses, they like whiskey, so it's all good. <laughs> so if you want to take it, pick it up, have a look at the color. What do we say it is? Amber? It is, yes, it has an amber, much darker than, well not darker, more yellow than most whiskeys. Yeah, so it's, it's got this amber yellow color to it, which comes with age. Uh, some of the less expensive whiskeys, they actually add caramel to get this color. Okay. This one was completely barrel uh, influenced, so you've got the yellow coming from the oak. And uh, it's a blend of several whiskeys, one of them being the malted chocolate. So if you smell it, it should smell kind of sweet on the nose. Um, it's a it single does. malt. Uh, Glen Marget product, one of their premium ones, so it's a very good whiskey. We sell it by the glass of $35, so you have $35 worth just there. So this oh. tasting, for the guests, is uh, a great one to try. So. Fantastic, yes. And, and, and what is this for the guests? Is this, uh, what is this? $30 for? per person. $30 per person, wow. So they get satin de champagne, a nice red wine, a port, and a whiskey, and chocolate, and they get to listen to right. me. Of course, I'm not finishing these drinks, but yeah, this is well worth it. Okay, let me give this uh, Let's go a for taste. taste. You can feel the burn? It is. Not smooth, that's for sure. It's 46% uh, so it's in alcohol. So it's, it's definitely, wow. Okay, yeah, that's got a burn. It's got a burn. But the aftertaste is really, really interesting. It kind of, once the burn disappears, you get these kind of cinnamon chocolate notes. Um, I am, yes. Good. Okay. So, the final test. Try with the dark chocolate and see if it uh, calms it down a little bit. Dark chocolate? This one's got dark ah, chocolate. Ah, okay. And your little espresso cup. There we go. Oh, this is nice. Well, first of all, that just coats your whole mouth. So, yeah. it, so we, hopefully, it's going to calm the burn and the power down, and you're going to appreciate the whiskey a little bit more, maybe. All right, let's give it a shot. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> it's still definitely it is whiskey. full power whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a proper scotch. Uh, it's got exactly what we want in the UK. Right. Keep us warm at winter. Absolutely. In Alaska, a glass of this on your balcony would be fantastic. But so. I tell you what, I never would have thought of having chocolate with whiskey. Yeah. Uh, chocolate and whiskey seems to be a new best friend to me. So. Yes, absolutely. But as you can see, every single uh, different beverage with the chocolates changes. Uh, so it's a lot of fun for the guests. Uh, some of them, they've been saying, we've never had a $90 bottle, uh, $90 bottle of wine before. So it's great for the guests to try new things. Uh, and then maybe they come to the dining room and purchase this product. So it's good for everybody. So it's all about education. Right, exactly. Well, thank you, Ross. This is Dustin West, producer of the Diz Unplugged, signing off. We hope you have a great day and see you next time. Thank you.